Hi, I'm Samantha Streamer Veneruso, and I'm pleased to be here today um, to share some of my thoughts and ideas around equitable and engaging facilitation in virtual spaces. I'm so glad that Mahabali and Mia Zamora asked me uh, to be here today. I hope that my thoughts and ideas help advance more equitable and inclusive online environments. Rather than share specific strat individual strategies, I wanted to talk a bit more about the mindset I try to take when I approach this work, online or in person. Creating inclusive, uh, engaging, and equitable virtual spaces takes planning and reflection. While each facilitation is different, there are some key things I focus on before, during, and after a meeting. And yes, planning for facilitation often takes me three to four times as much time as the meeting itself will take. And the times when I've had meetings go awry, I generally haven't taken the, the enough time on planning. To start, my overall approach to planning um, is before the meeting starts and focusing in on balancing the purpose and the goals of the meeting with the needs and interests of the participants and building connection and community among them. Underlying this is an evaluation and awareness of the relational and power dynamics of a group and making intentional choices for activities and approaches and strategies that create safe, connected virtual spaces. Ideally, goals and agendas are co-produced, but most often we have meetings, including formal education settings, where, goals and, where the goals and purposes, the structure or setting of the meeting is determined by external uh, circumstances a syllabi, a project, a class, a problem to solve. So I look for ways to, uh, to co-produce in the beginning of the meeting, such as building community agreements, checking with participants on the flow and structure of the agenda, seeking agreement for those things, seeking suggestions for time and format, or inviting attendees to play various roles in the meeting, note taker, timekeeper, uh, leader of discussion sessions, or other active roles. The goal behind this is finding strategies that invite participants into, for lack of a better word, co-ownership of the meeting in the meeting space. I also want to note for, that for me, planning a meeting that invites people to engage and connect in an equitable, meaningful way takes a balance between planning and flexibility. Being intentional about how you engage and connect with participants, how you help them connect with each other and set an environment that is welcoming for all is essential, but so is the willingness to throw some of the plans out the door as long as the stage, the stage has been set. I think of meetings in a three-phase process, opening, working, and closing. Each phase of the meeting has a different flavor and purpose. Opening focuses on setting the stage, building connections, emphasizing relational activities, and bringing everyone together um, to meeting this to the same meeting space and on equal footing. It may mean recognizing concerns or resolving open issues from previous meetings, or it may mean introduction activities. It just depends on the context. The opening focuses on activities that promote a psychologically safe space for people to connect. That might mean co create co-creating, as I talked about earlier, or just giving people space to talk. I recently picked up a strategy to start meetings with a short reflection or moment to sit quietly and invite everyone to let go of whatever else is going on in their lives so that they can be fully present with us. So in planning the agenda, I'm looking for activities at the begin beginning to set the stage and allow for building community and connection and that invite people to connect with each other during the working part of the meeting, I want to emphasize activities and engagement that move toward the purpose or goals for that particular meeting. These might be small discussions in breakout rooms, it might be co-working on a project in small groups or solving a problem together. It might be giving people time to work quietly on their own. It might be giving people a choice for how they want to engage in the work. It might be a facilitated process for reaching agreement if not consensus on decisions or actions, it also might be brainstorming on a shared document. During this phase, it's really important to pay attention to participants and get a pulse check as you go. Sometimes you have to abandon parts of your agenda and go with the flow, or you have to employ strategies that keep the meeting moving forward. Often I find it useful to check in when things aren't going to plan and give people a choice about how to move it forward. 
One thing to note prior to the meeting, I feel my responsibility is to set the stage and environment for engagement. But during the meeting, the locus of that, uh, the locus of control becomes shared. Recognizing that the meeting is really about the participants and their engagement and honoring that requires flexibility, awareness, and humility. The closing fo phase focuses on bringing people back together, recognizing and celebrating accomplishments and identifying next steps, if any. For me, the, after the meeting is really important too. I wanna to take time to thank and acknowledge people for their participation, recognize co contributions and follow up on any agreed on tax, tasks. I also wanna take time to reflect on how, th how I think things went. In addition to my own self-reflection, I ask for evaluation um, or feedback from attendees. I create anonymous space for those uh, attendees to give me feedback. And I, if we're in a regular meeting sequence, I'll often bring those things back and talk about how we might adjust to address concerns or to uh, reinforce things that people said worked. I think the core things that drive my mindset on facilitating equitable uh, virtual spaces is an emphasis first on care and compassion, on building connections, and a balance between structure and flexibility. Generally, I'm seeking to create healthy relational spaces where all participants are confident in each other's humanity, even when they may disagree or see the world dis differently. And setting the stage, planning carefully in advance, in advance of the meeting, and taking the time to reflect afterwards is really important to those things. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope you do well with your facilitation in the future.